Curse, they lost the Vulcan, and that makes them even lower on the chart. I don't care how good their support is, they've only had a day of practice or something. So if we lose a Curse, it'll be a huge upset to me. Well, huge upset could be in the works, of course. We'll look and see what happens in this game. Oh, yeah. Guys, welcome back to week one of the North American LCS Summer Split. I am still David Freak Tierley, and joining me from the uh, replay lounge is now Joshua Jat Leesman. Long trek. <laughs> <It was Yeah. laughs> uphill both ways. But he's made it, guys, and now it's time for our seventh match of the day. Nothing can hold this guy back. It's Team Solo mid versus Curse. TSM is coming off their best game of the summer. They finally look like the team that won the spring split during their role of Vulcan. And the odd one got TSM off to a great start in that game. It happened early today. He stole blue buff and got first blood in the first four minutes. He finished 3-0-8 and carried through. TSM used some really solid team play to turn that early lead into a quick 29-minute win. So if odd one and TSM can duplicate their effort against Curse, they would end Super Week on a two-game winning streak and tied for actually second place in the league at three and two. So while TSM seems to be hitting their stride really, really well, Curse is still trying to find their footing and are in danger of slipping to a one and four start to the split. And this has been a very trying week for Curse because Edward's acquisition is more of a long-term plan for the team and they've had such a short amount of practice time that they're trying to squeak out of this week with as few losses as possible since they knew that the better that they will be better later in the year. And they've had a lot of close calls so far too because yeah. their game against Team Coast or sorry, uh, Cloud9 could have went either way, and their game against CLG was very close. This team is just a few plays away from being a 3-1 and one team, so they really need to come together, Freak, if they want to beat their biggest rival here in TSM. It's going to be a fun match, of course, so let's take a look at the lineup so we can get ourselves into the game. On the blue side is Team Solo Mid. Dyrus in the top lane, the odd one in the jungle. Reginald up in mid, Wild Throttle the AD carry, and X Special still on support. And on the red side, we have Curse with Void Boy in top lane, St. Vicious in the jungle, Nijaki in mid, and then Cop and Edward, that new bottom lane, rounding out the AD in support. See if they can run it up this time. And of course, this brings us to our featured matchup. It's the All-Star Supports, TSM's X Special and Curse's Edward. And hey, man, Edward is known for his playmaking and his hook shots with Thresh, the Thresh Prince of Las Vegas now, because he's yeah. decided to move. And X Special has actually started to take a more vocal role on TSM since the All-Star game. Apparently, also, as Dyrus was saying, having it out with Reginald a little bit after yeah. yesterday's losses, and they turned it around for sure. And this is actually now the only league in the world where you get to see two All-Stars in the same role play against each other. It's going to be a fun one. And actually, Jat, uh, you know, speaking of people kind of turning the strides back around and keeping their games back uh, and, and kind of everyone having a good chance in this one, you had a fun mm -hmm. stat about the teams that were winning uh, so yeah. far today. We figured out during the break that in the six games today, six of the teams have won. Yeah. And Curse hasn't won a game yet today, but TSM has. So if we're going off the trends... Curse has got this one. Curse has got this one, guys. Champ Select has begun. It's time to get ourselves a game underway. Blue side DSM, red side Curse. And for the first time, actually, they're actually taking their time to plan out their first ban. Like, that surprised me a bit. And they're like, you know what, Nijaki? You really don't get Twisted Fate. And Curse says, you know what, TSM? Reginald, you don't really get Karthus this time around. And one of the themes of the day has been taking your time or just bouncing back and forth between Baron and mid lane, and Baron and mid lane, <laughs> and Baron and... You're familiar with that. Everyone <laughs> yes. else got to watch that game, fortunately. But uh, yeah, they are definitely taking their time. TSM's game against Vulcan had slow pick and ban as well. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's really anything we can look too much into other Fair. than they're just making sure they get the right stuff. Definitely a lot of respect bans coming through, mm -hmm. though. The Thresh Prince is not going to be able to reprise his wool. His, his wool, what is he, a sheep? He reprises his role here in this game that has been banned out of way by TSM. Of course, the Reginald Kha'Zix getting a lot of respect. So mm -hmm. taking their time or not, Curse are repeatedly banning Reggie. Well, if there's one thing that we've seen a lot of Kha'Zix play, yes, Reginald's play on Kha'Zix is awesome. And I think he was the first one to play Kha'Zix this weekend or in opening week. Everyone has done well on Kha'Zix this week. It's just been an eventuality of when he's in the game at Strong. And the Ziggs ban, I feel like, is a throwaway. I. I, I have to believe that. They're not mm -hmm. fighting Prawley unless he's randomly something yeah. we didn't know about this. So Surprise! Maybe they didn't need anything else. It just feels like confidence right here. Mm -hmm. I think that's exactly what TSM's been going for. One of TSM's tricks, actually, back in their scrimming days and when they scrim, is they will either not ban or ban champions that they don't care about because they are either trying to get the team to play something good against them or they want to see, like, give me your best shot. Play yeah. whatever you want against us, and the Ziggs ban could be a little bit similar because it denies bans as well. They had to get, they wanted to get rid of Elise to counter the odd one, but mm -hmm. obviously that would leave Jace up for Dyrus. 
So Jace is open, and of course, a lot of these really mm. high-tier picks are still available as well, right? Jace, we've seen guys uh, like Rise as well as Kennen have been really, really hotly contested, and then a lot are being left open right now. And if I think back to TSM's first game today, actually, Dyrus hovered over Jace for about 20 seconds, then he swapped to Shen. That's right. Yeah, and they let Vulcan pick up the Jace, and they were just completely fine with it because they were running comps instead of OP champions, in Dyrus's words. Of course, of course, and, and honestly, yeah. this... I, I just want to wait to see what they do. Of course, you've got one minute, one minute to make your mind on each side. They can't be too surprised with the bans coming out from Curse. And uh, I think we've talked about this before, about like trying to fake out your opponents and mm -hmm. show a champion for a long time. Think about Jace, think about Jace, think about Jace. Just kidding. And why would they hover over it for so long? Unless they were planning on letting it be locked in the entire time. <laughs> you... <laughs> that is making Son good and sure. All right. <laughs> it's not too surprising. It's definitely something he's practiced a lot of. It was his number one champion going into the All-Star game that he didn't actually get to play that much at the All-Star game. Mm -hmm. So now he gets to break it out here. No biggie. Yeah, it's a, it's a good time to start. The LCS season has begun. Mm -hmm. They're up against some really big rivals in Curse. And heck, ending the week at second place is not a bad place to start. Yeah. So TSM definitely looking to make this roll happen. We got a huge bunch in the brackets too because everyone aside from Cloud9 has lost at least twice. Yeah. So whether you're 2-3 and three or 3-2, three and two, you're pretty close. It's a 28-game season, so these guys are definitely still feeling each other out here. With the Rise and Kennen picks as well, Curse has already designated their solo lanes, which gives TSM and specifically Reginald a lot of freedom because he knows he's either leaning against a Kennen or, or a Rise. So whatever he does with his rune page, he's making sure to get a lot of magic with this. Definitely a big case here for these guys. And right now it's TSM's turn to make their own choices. Adon has been running a lot of at least, of course, with that one banned. He could be following the lead from Crumbs and Meteos and going for Zack here. Got four seconds to make their last few choices. Interesting, too. I haven't been privileged to watch the odd one Zack very much. I mm -hmm. know he was mainly spamming Elise recently. Zack is something that can probably fit for the odd one, but it's not, to me, it's not quite his play style. Yeah. I, I'm not kind of trying to put my finger on exactly what odd one's play style is, but it's like the Cho'Gaths. Even Nocturne, for some reason, has always worked for him in the past, but yeah. Zack just having to always go in with a bud. Not sure exactly how it's going to work for, for TSM. Well, they have, of course, locked in the Caitlyn as well. So a lot of long-range, really, tools here for TSM. Jason and Kate, both ready to fire from the back lines. Yeah, they're going to have a lot of long-range initiation, but, like, Dyrus can't necessarily go in with Reggie. Or, sorry, Reggie. Odd one. Odd one. Yeah. It's been a long day, man. It has, it has. Yeah. Thanks for sticking with us here. Of course, we've got two more games. So even if you guys are slipping, Drink some Red Bulls, get yourself hyped up because we've got great games still to follow in the day. Curse, it's their turn to make their choices. Mm -hmm. They're looking at their bottom lane. They grab their solos. They're saying, great, we're going to grab our bottom lane now. It's going to be Sona picked up for Edward, much to his chagrin. Uh, yeah. And looks like Cop going to be on Varus. And we were wondering earlier what Curse was going to do near the end of the week when they're really just trying to scrape out the wins because mm -hmm. they were trying a lot of unconventional for Curse strategies earlier on in the week. The Varus for Cop and even the Sona for Edward is very much what Cop is going to be used to playing with, and maybe we'll see a much more almost vintage curse yeah. in this game. And we really liked when Vintage Curse came through, when they put Voy on a hard carry yeah. like Trindamir, and everything went right for them. Exactly. Vintage Curse got them to the number one seed in the LCS for the majority of the last split yeah. before they had that late season collapse. So Vintage Curse might just be what these guys are looking for. 24 seconds left, and TSM actually made the same choice, right? They said, mm -hmm. we're not going to make those mistakes we did in Season 1. We're just going to play TSM style, stop rushing for champions that everyone else wants, and play what we want. Yet, here they are picking Zach, Jace, <laughs> Caitlyn. <laughs> Come on, guys. If they pick the Janna, it would make a lot of sense. X Special's Janna play has been absolutely incredible. And just now trying to figure out, yeah, that, that would make the most sense for them. They have the Ballista combo with Orion and Zach followed with Shock Blast stuff. So that is a, you know, it's it's a slightly different comp from TSM, but still, mm -hmm. I actually do feel like that's a bit of a OP champ comp for TSM. Okay. But I still like it. A couple of counter picks in there as well, and it's time for Curse to make their final choice. Their jungler still left open. Saint getting that one at the very, very end here. He's looking at Udyr. Yeah. It used to be the case where I would say Udyr was hard countered by Janna, and it was just no way you could close to it. Okay. But as they swap it off to a totally new champion. I'm okay. going to finish my Uter point. Sure. With the Boots of Swiftness change and the increased move speed on Bear Stance, he can get by against a Janna team. It's not as ideal as it is against a non-Janna team, but you can definitely make make do. I, I think the Nunu would be a substantially better pick, okay. but we'll see what he goes for. Ooh, he's actually looking at Sejuani. I mean, we've seen Saint 
playing a lot of tank initiators recently. Nautilus repeatedly locked in a heck of a lot. He's looking at the Sejuani right now. I mean, we've seen her a lot. We said she was available this billet. Uh, different one. Now I'm just trying to follow what Saint's going for. He's actually going to say, yes, I want Nasus in this one. I want the wave clear on everything else he brings. Those jerks. Those jerks, yeah. Rihanna's like four champions <sighs> right in the row. But they got Nasus now. So huge amounts of team fight potential there for Curse. And it's interesting that they pick such a immobile jungler uh -huh. against such a displacement heavy team that ta the TSM has. Because the Janna ulti, if used properly, as we've seen against Kennen, can completely shut that down. So if Curse doesn't initiate just right, or if X Special plays just perfectly, I feel like TSM will get this off of the disengage just from Janna alone. We'll see, though. So disengage and long range, really, I think, mm -hmm. holding a bit of a line here for TSM. And you said, right, Immobile Jungle going to make things a little bit hard for Curse, but I think they're picking into a bit of comfort here, so at least they'll yeah, they know are. how this comp runs. It's just tricky playing against a Janna because they pick the majority of their solo laners. Mm -hmm. The double ability power compositions don't really work with, like, the hit and run strategy necessarily. So even though they hadn't finished up their whole wombo combo of AoE, the Janna pick was safe right from the start as long as Curse hadn't picked it themselves. So it's a great pick by X-Special because this Janna's real good. Great adaptation then by TSM. I want to mm -hmm. see if he can do what Chowster did, though, and knock the hamster back over the wall because that always... It's like the funniest thing to see when you get that good of a monsoon and you're like, you literally do nothing with Slicing Maelstrom. It is quite a difficult situation to, yeah. to prep here. <laughs> I'd have to say. But it's a good highlight reel moment. Now, guys, Absolutely. we're getting ourselves into the game very, very soon here. Blue side, Team Solo mid. Red side, Curse. Curse, looking for their first win of the day here. If they can grab it, it's going to make their lives a lot easier, hoping that they can kind of build some momentum coming into week two as they get themselves ready to keep the games going on. Game is loaded up. we got ourselves a match. It's going to be great. Yeah, and Curse and Velocity are the only two teams today to not pick up a win. Everybody plays twice. Yeah. Everyone's going to go one and one, right? That's mm -hmm. the way that the LCS works. Yes. Okay, just checking. It's cool to see, though, that the league is so much closer now compared to, I would say, the beginning of the last split. We had this like huge top four, bottom four divide. A lot of teams took a while to even get their first win. But by mm -hmm. the first two days, teams had their first win. And it's just so much more competitive this time around. And even the opening of the season is a much more explosive here because we're starting yeah. with the Super Week instead of having a Super Week in Week 4. So everybody's getting a big dosage of themselves right off the bat. It's going to be fun. So here we go. The dosage going to be good enough for these guys. Curse in the top right. TSM in the bottom left. Auden right now playing as a human ward, actually. Solo mid. I mean, we see so many Wraith wards open up the series, mm -hmm. but TSM are super passive this time around. Yeah, there is no, like, thresh in the game this time either, so people don't aren't super worried about early game warding. We've been seeing a plethora of early game wards so far this split, but there's also because we've seen so much Blitzcrank and Thresh. That Shock Blast did not see St. Ficious. Is it going to get us something? They're a little bit surrounded. The Rune Prison goes off on a Reginald. Has to flash away from that one. He will survive this, but a lot of damage put off in TSM. Rage's got a recall right now. Jackie the same. He's hurt too. I'm a little wondering why St. Ficious just decided to Spirit Fire those guys. I think if he would have used the early skill point, which is difficult for Jungle to do on Wither, and mm -hmm. then Withered someone, that way they could chase him down after Flash. I think they could have gotten First Blood and then St. Fishes just would require a better pull on his jungle. But he'd already skilled up his Spirit Fire before the level one engagement happened. So Curse didn't get that golden opportunity. Instead, though, he's just going to pick up some gold from these wolves here. Of course, Edward spending a lot of time here, taking up some of the damage and making sure that he gets that decent pull that he's looking for. The odd one in a very similar situation. He's going to start up on blue. So uh, some, some early antics definitely in this game, but we've kind of got ourselves back to a safe start in this battle. Odd one and uh, Saint both grabbing their blue buffs without too much trouble. Yeah, and it does look like we have a couple of lane swaps, obviously. Cop and Edward are mid against Reginald. This is a common theme for Reginald. He often gets two people against him in the mid lane, and he's actually become very adept at dealing with it. Even in the first game when he had his flash burn early on in the match, he still came back strong. Well, meanwhile, though, speaking of 2v1s, Jackie's having a bit of a harsh time with that one, as especially in Wild Turtle have put some pain on him, dropping him down below half health. That said, he does have teleport. Yeah, and that's the nature of a 1v2 rise at the very start of the game. You get screwed at the start. You cannot deal with two people when you're only level one unless you get some backup. So either the wave's going to all the way push in. It doesn't look like Sandfish is planning a three-man dive. So now Jackie should be able to pick up a bit of farm once it gets to his turret, assuming he doesn't take too much damage from the poke. He doesn't quite take the Peacemaker on the backside there, but Special has been constantly landing those tornadoes and opening those situations. Got to say, you said 
Special has a great Jana. We're seeing it here, even in the very early laning. He's just going to have to continue trying to pull that off. You have the odd one now coming around the back, but at the same time, St. Ficious is coming to help out. So they're on a collision course for each other, and this is probably going to turn into one of those 2v3 laning situations. It leaves St. Saw over. They're just going to go right on it anyway. They want to fight the 3v2. A lot of damage coming across. Wild Turtle tanking turret aggro and then walks right through. They've now got Curse surrounded. This is weird. This is weird. They're proxying the minion wave. Jackie puts some damage. Turtle's been rune prisoned. He's putting some damage. Jackie's down below half health. They're actually still fighting it underneath the enemy turret. Yeah, and Sona's actually roamed all the way from mid lane. So Edward making some plays. I think he's going to have to burn a flash here unless Jackie flashes over for a rune prison. Very nice path that special took. Barely saving his life. Can they aggro the, the dragon and deal damage in time? No, Special will simply flash away. He does survive that, but all that turret dive happened was uh, really just burned seven away from TSM. I feel like St. Fishes came down at the right time and the rune prison timing as Wild Turtle was walking through the turret really saved Jackie and St. Fishes' life there. Great repel of rotation from TSM by Curse. Okay, so good openings here. Reggie now forced to, again, sit in this back line, but you talked about how good Reggie was in those 2v1s. He's at 16 minions, whereas Jackie's still only at four. So you called that right. Reggie's really not doing that bad. I think some of that obviously has to do with the rotations that we just saw. Sure. Because Edward walked all the way down to the bottom, and at that point, Reginald was just 1v1 against an AD carry. And there's kind of a reason AD carries don't go 1v1 mid anymore, is because they lose a lot of those early game duels against champions, specifically like Orianna, who get to shield themselves while they do auto attacks that are pretty much as nice as Varus' early game. So Reggie doing his job, but the team creating a lot for him like usual. All right, so there we go. TSM working around their mid laner quite successfully. Cop and Edward still trying to put the poke down. There we get some damage onto Reginald, but of course he came to lane with a bunch of potions and is sustaining himself back up. Cop and Edward also, to look at this, they're really not putting any major pressure on the turret until now they finally get their first wave to hit it. Yet yeah, neither of these 2v1s are really pushing the wave that hard. They're mainly focusing on harass, as you can see by Cop charging up that piercing arrow, actually maxing his piercing arrow, which is always something to check on a Varus, whether they max the Q or the E. Yeah, it's been a little bit different now with the patch change where the damage went over there. We've seen them make a couple of different moves for this one. Cop and Edward, though, they're still looking for that push. So let's check out one of these other lanes and see how the other pushes are going. Special and Wild Turtle, they're trying to put up against Saint, but he's just sitting there spirit firing, and that turret's not taking much damage either. Nasus is a very good jungle pick against a team that you think is going to be shoving a lot. That's why when Velocity played their jungle Ezreal push comp earlier on in the day, they banned Nasus. And that's why St. Fish has been able to keep this turret so healthy. That one spirit fire he put previously really more than halved the amount of time that minions were sitting at that turret and saved a huge amount of damage down there. So by comparison, Odd One is trying to hold this turret in the mid lane, but uh, doesn't have Spirit Fire yeah, on Zach. Yeah, it's not the same. Not really. Not really. The Void Boy, though, he's level 6. He's just hit his ultimate, and you can see how well he's zoning out Dyrus from this. I gotta say, Dyrus is doing a great job farming, though. If we've seen one thing from Kennen this week, it's how well Kennen can dominate the laning phase. Even one of our first matches of the entire week, it was actually Void Boy on Jace getting killed by a Kennen. It was Psycho, Psycho Sid, Sid, and he yeah. just... Or, no, maybe he was Elise, but he got killed by a Kennen. And Voivo knows how powerful it is, so Dyrus doing a great job since he's pretty much even in farm. So beautiful stuff there. Dyrus has hit level 6, which uh, means a bit less on Jace, to be fair. Uh, but he's got a rank in W, maxing out the Q as one does normally. The mid lane, though, he puts the Shockwave up on Cop. Cop forced to flash backwards. Edward, power recording back. The mid turret's taking a bunch of damage, but they've stopped the push. Yeah, and the bottom lane has had a lot of harassment go down, too. Just look at how low Wild Turtle and St. Vicious are, but the mana is burned out by St. Vicious. So even though Turtle and X Special are super, super low, they have more threat right now, and they may get some freedom on this turret as they shove up that lane as quickly as possible. The headshot's being used. The auto attack's coming by as well. Interestingly, he's actually not built over Peacemakering the lane. He's low enough on mana. He's trying to save that for other abilities. Gets a shield as Rise goes for the damage, and there's the push on the turret. Oh, there's that sneaky TP, too. So Jackie made it back with full mana. Now I feel like he's too much threat for X-Special and Wild Turtle to deal with. One of the things with doing a teleport Rise in a lane is you're actually opting yourself into a 1v2. Because the way 1v1 top lane Rise actually survives is because his trades are so powerful that people don't want to walk into range to harass you, but they're only threatening enough if you actually bring a combat summoner on Rise. So early on in the game, if you see a pro going like Teleport Rise or Ignite Rise, it'll generally tell you whether or not that team wants to 1v1 or 1v2 that side lane. And a great adaptation by Jackie. He's been holding that lane so well. The turret, half health, which is really not bad considering not the mid all. lane turret for TSM is like practically dead at this point. So I gotta lend a hand. Curse making a lot of good early game choices. They are hanging in there. Okay. TSM was dominating Vulcan in the early game as well. But the, the gold is just completely even. 
Curses has adapted to what TSM has been doing, but we haven't talked about like why the game would still be close. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so Curse right now, St. Vicious, he's gonna actually walk right into the Odd One. Level six on each of them. Spearfire comes down, a little bit of pain on Odd One. Of course, he's sustained up pretty well with Bloblitz. I'm waiting to see when that mid turret's finally gonna go down, because it has like 12 yeah. health and Curse aren't, like, they're trying to push forward. There we go, they've pulled Saint over there. Maybe that'll be enough for them. Yeah, this is most likely enough. Reginald's ultimate is actually gonna be back up in five and Odwin is level six as well, so they might try a 2v3 ballistic combo. Here we go. He's gonna dive on in, Saint taking some pain, but the ult's gonna go back onto the Odwin. He's been forced to really run away from this one. Shockwave comes across, and Odwin has been forced down into Bloblitz. Now, can they stop him from going down? A lot of damage coming across. Varus and Edward trying to do the damage over the wall. He does get first blood just in time. Cop picked up the 400 gold on top of the turret. TSM needed to be able to engage that before their turret died if they wanted to take off. Also, I'm surprised, Reginald, that Odwin didn't actually try to pull off the combo. Odd One was dead before Reginald used his ultimate, and even though he was able to flash over the wall, Curse had enough savvy to shoot over top, pick up that first blood. Great move right here. Now, Wild Turtle, ooh, getting hit hard by Jack. He was actually donated to the blue buff not long ago, so Rise, he teleported, got the mana pool, got the tier, now he's just huge. And I was kind of expecting Curse to go for the dragon after that one, but Boy Boy plus Dyrus battling it out top. Boy Boy can't get the stun. Ooh, he does just from the last take of the ultimate, but Dyrus wants to turn back with the ignite, puts the acceleration gate back down, jumps in, goes man mode. One more attack to go. He just barely wins the fight. Now, is the ignite enough? It is not. Dyrus wins the 1v1. Just ticking off those auto attacks. He didn't even have a health potion running. Didn't need it. Come on now, Dyrus. You know better than that. So 1v1's Boy Boy. Really good stuff. I remember the all-star voting between these guys was like a percentage yeah. away between Darius and Boy Boy. And Darius coming on top that time. Absolutely amazing job right there. And the thing is, in the interview, he said he felt like he was the weakest top laner in the North American LCS right now. Uh, I think he's proven himself wrong right there. That was a really, really good set of moves by him. Yeah, that's uh, that's non-confident Darius talking. <laughs> he knows he's definitely in the top tier of North American top laners. He's Competing on the world stage, a lot of the top laners were incredibly impressed with Dyrus' play when they played against him, saying they got to treat him like like an equal in a lot of these times because Dyrus can definitely hold his own. But, Dragon time. And TSM definitely with a bit of a lead there. Dyrus has come down to join his team in the Dragon Pit, and it's going to be a bit of a fight here. The rest are milling in. Dragon getting lower and lower. Oh. Blue team picks up Dragon. Good split by the Alpha. Now Jackie getting caught. Has to flash away. Crescendo hits Dyrus. Can they go back in? Wither coming across. Still damage. And the Shockwave coming up on Rise 2. They pick up Nijacky, and now TSM looks for some more fights. Cop losing health right now. Wild Turtle participating in this fight. Has no ulti available. Odwin jumps over the wall, but can't quite get in range. Gets the Q slow. This could just be enough. The Zephyr, the barrier still used. He's not quite going down. The piercing arrow comes by, but Wild Turtle picks up the kill. At the same time, Dyrus dove the turret and got Edward. And there's still cursed people on the run. Saint and Voiboy have yet to be able to enter this fight. I think they want to run or just chase down Dyrus. The rest of TSM did not expect to see them there. Oh my god, the burst, and they take down the three and zero Dyrus, but that's not going to be enough to save the bottom turret. And Voi actually has ultimate in three seconds if he wanted to keep going, and even if it was 4v1, Voi's not that crazy, <laughs> but all right, that was a very big play for TSM. Not only did they get the dragon, they got multiple kills. The only problem is that they got the shutdown bonus given away by Dyrus. Still a fantastic set of plays for them, taking advantage of this early game. So that's given them an 1,800 gold lead then. The early game lead quite nice for these guys. Jackie just trying to farm and get there on the rise. He's uh, he picked up those rays right there. He's farming himself back up. So with gold in mind, let's take a look at how these item builds start to differentiate. We've got the BF sword open for Wild Turtle, going for Iage or Bloodthirster, but Cop wants to get the early Blade of the Ruin King. And Cop has been out farming Wild Turtle as well, which is something we can't forget, especially since Wild Turtle was pretty much just solely against the Jackie and St. Vicious play. The only kind of difference in the lanes was that failed early game tower dive that Wild Turtle pulled off, which probably slowed him down a bit. I like Cop's last hitting potential thus far, and if he gets to the Blade of the Ruined King, it'll be a nice thing to try to peel off the odd one, but I think the late game potential of Wild Turtle's build will be greater. So let's see if TSM can get there. Of course, they're already winning the early game, so this might not be uh, very difficult in the end for things. Uh, right now, we look at Reginald dueling up against Cop. Now, last time they were 1v1, Reggie held up just fine. Odwins are looking for a move here on St. Vicious. He's got the slow. They've got him following up as well. And TSM is mainly just shoving them back from the turret so that they could take it. There was enough threat coming back up because Dyrus was following. And there's a four-man TSM power squad coming up top here. And Curse doesn't necessarily have the manpower to stop. 
but TSM peels back because Jackie's pushing mid. That's a lot of aggression coming out of this rise right here. Sweeps out the wave, and no one is there just yet to turn that one back. So a little bit of farm going towards the curse side. Voibai has held the top lane successfully. Uh-oh, this could be a little bit risky for a special. Saints Can chasing get down. get wither? You get the wither. Wild Turtle shows his presence and says, please get off my support. Looks like that will dissuade Curse from chasing back in. So let's take a look over at the bottom lane, though, because the early push came in from Reginald. But mm -hmm. no, I thought it was going to freeze it. Never mind. Bad call. Yeah, well, he had the cannon wave arrive. And generally, the lanes tend to get a little bit unfrozen when the cannon wave arrives because it's just so desynced. And Cop wants to go elsewhere as well because of the way TSM pressures the map after they get two outer turrets down. TSM pretty much always goes for the third outer turret, which means Curse needs men in the mid lane to stop this. But they're just going to go in for it anyway. Let's bounce comes across, and St. Vicious has been caught out. The ball is to combo comes in, and St. Force to run. Crescendo comes in for the counter engage. Edward is alive, and the Varus ult really stopping up TSM as well. St. just barely oh, survives man. that. Special has no health. Jackie's going to start exerting his presence. Gets the uh, rune present on Wild Turtle. Wild Turtle forced to back up, but goes in back on Jackie. Jackie just really survives survives that. There's so many low health bars, but TSM have the numbers advantage. This will be their turret. And it looks like they got the third turret. The instinct from Cop was right to go and stop TSM from diving his team, but Voiboy Boy was off doing other things in the top lane, and much like the majority of this week, Curse seems a little bit out of sync on their calls. I mean, we always talk about how a bad call that everyone follows is better than a good call that some people follow. And when Cop went mid lane, I feel like he was following a call that they needed help mid, whereas Voiboy Boy may have been doing his own thing in top. And that paid them the price of a turret. So TSM, all of them following the right call, and that seems to work out here. But Dyrus has been caught out here. Jackie looking for the damage. Dyrus wanted to hammer smash him back, and then immediately flashes out. Great mechanics there by Dyrus. Lost the flash, but he got away. Yeah, and Dyrus says he's not a good top lane player. <laughs> Come on now, that was... Being able to get just a fraction ahead so we could knock backwards. An interesting thing about the Jace knockback is it will always knock someone back 600 units from Jace. So you actually knock someone back farther if they're closer to you when you start it. So it was even better for Dyrus there, making sure there was absolutely no way he could get tracked since he knocked him back directly away. Great moves in by Dyrus. Good knowledge of mechanics and showing why he was the all-star top laner. And again, three and one, he's doing great. And actually his item build is progressing so incredibly quickly as well. 5,300 gold, most in his team. Mana Mune, Brutalizer, and cooldown boots already done. That's the Jace build. He hasn't been shut down at all by Voiboy. Boy. A lot of times when Jaces have to lane against a Kennen, they're forced into a Null Magic early mm -hmm. or even a Hex Drinker, and it slows down their armor penetration combo with Mana Mune slash Mura Mana. Yeah. Hasn't been the case for Dyrus because he was able to outdo a Voiboy Boy before Voiboy Boy had items, and he got the power spike, didn't need to go magic resist. Beautiful stuff then. So full offense, Dyrus, and he's been coordinating himself around these team fights pretty well, as we just saw a second ago. Doesn't need the MR because he is a strong, independent Jace. So. TSM looking for their next move. You don't need. I, I see what you there, man. <laughs> you don't need no MR. All right, Saint Vicious though on uh, minion sweeping duty. TSM looking for the next move around the map. They're they're in the lead by 4,000 gold. They got 20 seconds left on Dragon. I feel like they want to keep snowballing the advantage though. I think they do. TSM loves to win and they love to win fast. Specifically when they have the Oriana plus Zac combo. One time they pull it off great. The other time it costs the odd one his life. But the Dragon fight may very well create a bunch of team fights. The one thing that Curse has now is a level 11 Voiboy. Boy. Kennen is awesomely strong at this point in the game. No Zhonyas, so if TSM bursts him down fast enough, it could be trouble. But despite the 4,000 gold lead, this may be a dangerous fight for TSM to go into if they don't do it just right. TSM are a little bit split up. They're coming in from multiple different angles here. Saint is taking up this Baron, not losing too much health right now. Of course, Life Steal passive helping him in this one. Reggie coming in from the side. He's looking for somewhere to go. Auburn just jumps right in. Ever takes a bunch of Pokemon special. They're looking at him getting chucked out right there. He's got a shield out of himself, but Ever goes down. Me with the Grishenna, Voiboy Boy jumping in, but takes too much pain as well. A really good opening fight for TSM. St. Vicious in a bad place. Auburn just leaps in there and finds oh, the Shockwave comes in. 4-0 for TSM. Kapow! You could see the way TSM fought there was not allowing Curse to get their AoE off. It was a double-pronged attack. They came in from two to three angles. The odd one jumped in in the middle. There was X Special off on the side. Voiboy Boy had no direction to go in. St. Vicious' ultimate could never get into a team. TSM just flanked everyone on Curse and completely just discombobulated them, getting the 4 for 0. Absolutely beautiful coordination by them. And as a payment for that, they got that secondary turret. And now say, Dragon, yes, please give us more global gold. 7,500 gold now puts TSM ahead. I think things just got out of hand. Because a second ago, this was manageable. Yeah. There was a Dragon fight that if Curse won, they're like, all right, guys, 
we're going to be back into the game. But at this point, you need more than that because a 7,000 gold lead at 18 minutes is... We've had a lot of comebacks this week. Yeah. I don't think we've seen a comeback from a lead this big. So let's see then if they manage to pull a miracle and, and, and kind of break the chain that's been going on so far in the games. Curse, if they do pull a comeback, you said it takes more than just one miracle team fight. What can they do to pull themselves back in? So they need to find a way to not kind of get flanked around, which is incredibly difficult against what TSM is doing now. Voiboy in particular needs to be able to catch multiple people in his ult, mm -hmm. and then maybe they need to catch TSM in some odd turret dives. Uh, the farming has actually been adequate for Curse. Mm -hmm. Their items are building up a little bit, but they're just getting out positioned. So if Curse can position better and also fight, honestly, 5v4s or 5v3s is what they're going to need to do for a little while. Maybe even steal a Baron. They need a lot of things to happen. A lot of things they do need indeed. Right now, though, it's the top lane push, hoping to put some gold back into their pockets. Boy's going to tank up the turret damage because, look, they really just need the gold. And Saint and Jack, you're going to make that happen. However, in the mid lane, TSM just want to fire that back, trading equal things and pushing farther and farther into the cursed base. And this is going to force, oh my gosh, Dyrus just stopped the recall from Edward. They're going to keep pushing in and they're not outnumbered yet. Yeah, and Dyrus just really giving them the freedom to be able to take this next turret. There's not enough people on Curse back. If Voiboy wants to go in, this could be like a 4v4 that Curse gets, but with the poke that Voiboy took going in there, it's a real dangerous 4v4. They actually still have Cop waiting around on the bottom lane yeah. to push down this turret. It will go down to this next wave, but they're down to the inhibitor here. And the Ignite goes down onto Jackie, pushing him out of the fight as well. Odd One just spamming away on that inhibitor. I feel like it's down. Cop not back at the base yet. Turret for inhibitor. Not really a good trade. A bit of a risk overall. Eight to two in kills, six to three in turrets. All these numbers are bigger for that blue side TSM. And you said they like to end games early, 20 minutes in, and the inhibitor is already down. Yeah, th that's a good way of tracking a team's progression. You look at the number. Is it bigger than the number on the other side? Yeah. Is it deaths? And if the answer to the deaths question is no, then they're winning. <laughs> so I think that's true for everything that TSM is happening right now. Uh, in all accounts. So Dyrus is going to have to go back down to the bottom lane. Cop had pushed it out, but he's like a secondary turret. Not the worst thing in the world, of course. No dragon available. Minion's going to start flooding into the mid lane, though. This is so difficult. Mm -hmm. Said it would take a bit of a miracle for Curse, and they've still not quite found what that is. They thought maybe a split push, maybe taking some turrets down and trading them out to get the global gold back a little bit closer to equal. But so far, that's really not happened for these guys. Yeah, and I wonder if Curse has kind of resigned themselves out of this week at this point. They've had so many close losses. They're already 1-3, and, and they didn't seem that pumped going into this game. They weren't pulling off, like, crazy strategies, and I feel like they're just kind of ready to say, all right, guys, Super Week did not work out for us. Let's just deal and work for the next week. Whereas TSM, they had it out last night, and they've actually been on a tear today. They have been on a tear. They've, doing, they've done absolutely amazing. Came off of a, uh, a win in the very, very first game, but then uh, still, they're, they're looking to close this week out at second place, which mm -hmm. still no slouch to be in with this hyper-competitive summer split. Though Curse, they're still playing it, right? They're still putting in the effort. They're looking for yep. somewhere to go. The push down mid lane is just getting stymied, though. Super minions take too long for them to kill. Yeah, they don't have the damage yet. There's just the Blade of the Ruined King on Cop. Nijaki hasn't even reached an Archangel Staff, let alone a Seraph's Embrace on Rise. Still no magic penetration going. Boy Boy finally got a bit of magic resist, so when he walks near Orianna, he doesn't lose half of his health. Mm -hmm. But there's still no Aegis. There's just the Sight Stone on Edward, but no real way of getting good crescendos off unless he completely burns his Flash into a team that's never grouped up to get hit by crescendo. So yeah, many things are going well for TSM, if that's a... Uh, that's a nice way of putting it. It absolutely is. Their positioning has been on point. You said spreading out for those ultimates and making sure they don't get caught together. And that's such a good thing to see, the veteran team knowing how to team fight this and knowing how to push on through this inhibitor turret now taking a lot of poke here. And Reggie from across the wall keeps poking out at Curse while Jackie farms in the bottom wave. Mm -hmm. They're getting damage in the top turret. And Curse is just trying to get some of the farm back. When they're turtled into their base, they can't just let all those waves dive to the turret. Otherwise, they will keep falling farther and farther behind. In the comebacks we've seen today, these inhibitors have fallen much later and they've had really powerful wave clears or farm baby carries to clear the ways fast. Curse can't do that, which means these turrets aren't being capable of being defended because they need, it takes too much time to get super minions out of their base. Another thing falls over, Ever takes a Caitlyn ult and just takes it on the chin right there, but now the inhibitor is the focus. Curse is maybe looking to stop them down here, but it's down below half health. Wild Thread are still putting bullets down into that structure. Kills off the minion wave. TSM are not wanting to relinquish this. Verizal goes by. Here comes Curse. Boy by Watson. Wild Thread gets a little bit caught right there. Boy's gonna get knocked back though. Can they re-engage? Saint 
forced to run back. There comes Crescendo, and the blood bounce comes across. They explode. Edward, and the fight has begun. St. Vincent running away in the bottom hand side now. Boy getting chased out as well. There's the jump in from Dyrus. Doesn't quite get the kill, though. The Zonius comes across. The jump in from Oddwood. They picked up two more kills. Those APs are gone. And now they're on to the Nexus. This could be the game for TSM. And this would be the fastest game of the day. TSM with some resounding dive ability. That was a desperation fight by Curse. The Janna ultimate even though they probably didn't need it to be key, was super key in that fight as Voiboy Boy did not get stuns off the slicing Maelstrom. And there's a TSM looking very focused as the game closes out. I guess it, it wasn't really a surprising result. The whole game seemed to really go their way. And you know, unlike the, the coast crazy comeback, we're like, I can't believe I did that. TSM's like, we played our game. Mm -hmm. And this is the TSM that the TSM fans are used to seeing. This is what they we saw at the end of last split in yeah. the last Super Week. It's what we saw in the playoffs when they took the number one seed in North America. And that's not the curse we've seen either. It is not. Curse has a lot of work to do. And I know from talking to them, especially Edward, he says, look, I know we're going to be amazing, but I know we have work to do. We've barely been here. Curse fans do not despair. They've got a whole split to work this out and turn themselves back in at the end of this all. So uh, some work to go for these guys, but certainly nowhere to go but up for them. For Curse, hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully there's nowhere to go for them up. They do have the win. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, definitely a good start for them. Yeah. So, I mean, I kind of want to talk about the return to form, though, for Team Solo Mid, just because okay. uh, we had this little rocky patch in the middle of Super Week. Because anyway, mm -hmm. Super Week is long enough that you see stories kind of go up and down. Yeah. They won the very first game. All right, TSM's back. Downward. TSM, yeah. where are you going? TSM, where are you going? And they came back and to the very back. end. Mm -hmm. And it's quick adaptation that they've been able to pull off. Those guys have been together for a super long time. They obviously had the one roster change in the past about year and a half when Wild Turtle replaced Chaos during the middle last split. Mm -hmm. But they have shown now that they're able to solve their problems quickly yeah. because they had pretty much no problems today. Both of their wins were very decisive. They really, really were. So excellent play by these guys. And in fact, I want to highlight some more of the excellent play. We have a replay of that dragon fight where they kind of surrounded the opposition. And this was such a pretty dragon fight because everyone on Curse wanted to land AoE, but no one did. Boy Boy was getting knocked around so much. And then he tried to get his ult enough, but he still hasn't been able to use the spell. He got knocked down and killed as soon as he used it. St. Ficious was trying to chase Wild Turtle, but he couldn't make it there. And Nijacky had to turn tail and run right off the bat like the way TSM flanked around curse in that fight did not leave room for curse to react and just the the uh, crazy aggression too it, it's mm -hmm. it's what we see I think is a common trend from the really top teams is they are able to go in hard at the right time and that's what TSM has kind of modeled themselves after in all their success when they were the top team all throughout season two it was that aggressive play style that's yeah. really where we coined the term for it was thanks to TSM so congratulations to them. A very, very well-played game. And of course, what other man to join us than Reginald, who will talk about finishing out Super Week with a win. Then it's our final match of the day between the two newest teams in the LCS, Velocity Esports versus Cloud9. Super Week continues live from Los Angeles right after this.